Hello everyone, welcome back and keep it so so much for joining me. Today we are doing another brand deep dive. I know I say my dives aren't that deep, they're more like shallow paddles. <laughs> but we are going to be looking at MAC Cosmetics. This is one that has asked me frequently to do it in the comments of the other video, so I thought let me do it. And this one's going to be a little bit different in the way that I'll go through the history of MAC and kind of like a downfall era, but I actually worked for MAC for many, 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 many years. And I was there at the point when social media came into play, social media beauty, and when I feel like MAC kind of made a few mistakes. There's going to be quite a bit of personal experience in this but it's relevant um so yeah as always i'll have any products i use i usually use like the youtube link thing they're not a affiliate links so just, it's just the shopping thing i never talk about the products throughout but just so you know this is the mob um and rose and ben collaboration i want to be using today and for most of the whole look i'm going to be using the blend bunny cosmetics for get me not palette let's just start off by saying this right if you've ever used mac comment down below the first product you remember using from mac i bet you you can remember it and i bet you for some of you it was like a moment an iconic moment within your own makeup journey. And feel free to comment throughout. Okay, oh, my jaw hurt. Remember to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and follow me on TikTok, where I share like, like, you know, things, like beauty advice and things. <laughs> so MAC Cosmetics was the biggest name. No questions about it, no arguments. In makeup for both professionals and the average consumer, and they made makeup and collections unmatched by any other brand. They were the go-to, the most exciting, the most creative. However, somewhere along the way, they fell from the top, to put it politely, and they kind of struggled for recognition and attention again. But can MAC ever reclaim their position as number one? in the beauty space. Let's discuss. As I mentioned earlier, I worked for MAC from the age of 17 until I was about 32, with about two or three years gap in between, sporadically. I worked from in their, in their heyday up to their pre-COVID like flop era. <laughs> I worked from during the rise of beauty gurus and YouTube and through seeing the whole beauty industry change to what it is today. And before we go any deeper, I just wanna say this, MAC is a brand that I respect and I fully owe my makeup knowledge and experience to this company. They kept me educated throughout the years of working with them, all the practice I had with that brand, all the extra other little jobs I got to do with that company. Company. My best memories of working in makeup is with MAC. And I had some amazing um, jobs freelance wise, but I had the best memories with them. But it doesn't mean we can't give a bit of constructive criticism, you know, like you would give your friends if they were wearing a shitty lipstick. So the history of MAC is something I know. Sorry, I keep looking for this one brush. So the history of MAC and how MAC started is ingrained in me. It is something I know like the back of my hand. So MAC stands for Makeup Art Cosmetics, not Makeup Artist Cosmetics, which some people were saying it stands for when I was like doing like a bit more research. It's it's not as Makeup Art Cosmetics. So it was founded in 19... 1984 by the two Franks, Frank Toscan and Frank Angelo. In Toronto, Canada, MAC is a Canadian brand. So the two founders being, you know, makeup artists, photographers, were kind of trying to fill this gap in the market for makeup that um, looked good on camera, wasn't wish-washy, didn't fade out, and was up to a really good standard that both um, photographers, makeup artists, models could rely on in professional settings, on shoots. Anywhere you would need like a good kind of like stand out. You know what? I'm going to give myself really Botox eyes today. Really good kind of like stand out makeup. Because you need to remember sometimes fl a flash can wash out makeup like crazy depending on the, the lighting situation. So especially back in these days in the 80s where things weren't, weren't as advanced. I mean, it wasn't the fucking stone ages, but things weren't as like as advanced in photography as they are now, they were frustrated with how limited the range was for professional cosmetics and, and, and what they could use. So they literally got to cooking up their own products in their kitchen. If you ever went to a MAC counter back in the day, I'm sure you would rarely find one now, but you might remember that the mirrors were like saucepans, like frying pans. It's kind of a nod to the creation of the brand being made in the kitchen. And there's like beakers and stuff like that. Again, because it's that like at home science we're doing our own, making our own makeup kind of vibe, you know? So they set out to make something that not only looked good on camera, but also accommodated a wide range of skin tones, textures, types, because again, 80s at this time, not a good choice. Brands weren't 
accommodating in that sense. But then it got to a point where when they were using these products like backstage, models, photographers, makeup artists would be like, hey, listen, can I buy whatever this is from you? And it kind of just spiraled from there really. And they were doing amazing when they became, you know, their, an actual brand. Makeup artists love their stuff. Celebrities love their products. And one celebrity in particular, Madonna, loved their products. So she was going on this tour. I was about to say the era's tour, but that's not Madonna. <laughs> Frank and Frank, the founders, made this custom lipstick for Madonna for this iconic look. We all know, when you think of dressing up as Madonna, you think this or, you know, many other things, but also this is like the main Madonna look, right? This iconic red. The shade of this red was Russian red. And if you are a fan of MAC Cosmetics or a, a makeup artist, you're a fan of beauty in general, you will know Russian red. It's this beautiful, matte, fully pigmented, Louis, what I call classic Hollywood red. It is the most stunning color, suits everyone looks incredible on everyone it's just it's just the most perfect red and this seeing madonna wearing this really gave a boost to their brand because it was iconic so that really put mac's name on the map and mac being you know kind of known for their lipsticks they started the mac aids fund viva glam that was launched in 1994 with rupaul as their first spokesperson these products when you buy even in stores now if you buy a mac viva glam lipstick a hundred percent of the proceeds go towards the mac aids fund and they have raised 500 million to, to date today it's 2023 a huge 500 million that is half a billion, is it? Because I'm really bad at maths, dollars. Anyway, no matter how much, it, it is incredible. And they continue to use like celebrities and stuff like that. They used to make us wear these ugly t-shirts every Friday, right? Ugh. They, were, they were horrendous. The Nicki Minaj one and Ricky Martin, or was it just Nicki Minaj, was like this weird lime brownie green. If you know the shade, you know what I mean. It's this, it's this neon green that's also yellow, but also brown, also khaki. It's, it's the most horrendous. And they made us wear it. I was like, listen, you're Mac. Just give us a black t-shirt with a print on it. Anyway, let me tell you what it was like back then, right? Let me take you on a, mem on a memory lane, <laughs> down memory lane, because you worked for MAC, you were a makeup artist for the best, no question about it, makeup brand of the moment. Like it was the it brand to work for. You were known for being really good at makeup, selling really amazing products. Your counter, the makeup counter was like, every day was like a Saturday night. The music was really loud. Everyone was dressed up. Makeup was on point. You were slightly arrogant. You're slightly cocky. Your customer service, terrible. Cause you knew you were the best. You knew you were the best counter. People were gonna come back. Everyone and all the other beauty counters hated you, but you didn't give a fuck. You were the it brand and nobody could tell you anything different now whether all of that is true or not so let me set out this timeline for you right and i told you a lot of my personal experience is going to be in this because a lot of relevant things happened about the company when i was with this brand um let me tell you where i, where I am at in life so it's 20 2012 i'm 23 24 i'll have to do the maths so at this point i've been working for mac for about six six ish years so now i'm working in the pro store in carnaby street when it used to be on the corner the old one the pro store is where there's like an extended range of products right specifically for and this is coming into relevancy later it mainly aimed at makeup artists who wanted to mix their own products create more editorial looks there was an extended range of lipsticks foundations there's full coverage was only a pro product at that time eye pencils, the whole, um, everything. Everything was like, it was loads of extended products. And all the staff there, you had to have a certain like certifications before you worked there. And a good knowledge of the brand and a good knowledge of makeup. I used to be scared of the staff who worked there before I worked there. So here I am, 23 year old me, thinking I should be doing more with my life, even though it was an amazing time. And I start to notice something from the customers. Something is happening quite regularly, regularly? regularly and then it starts popping up with my um clients i'm doing freelance as well my regular clients and also i was working in a strip club as a makeup artist but that's a story for another time people start asking me for things in makeup artist terminology okay someone asked me to contour their face. Now I know that sounds just like a regular thing, but back then, before, you know, you, well YouTube was around, but it wasn't as popular as it was. We didn't have influencers as such, were, were so big back then. Contouring wasn't a regular term. So I was like, what? 
What do you know about contouring? Where did you learn that word? A, lo a lot of the time you didn't know about it. People would come in and be like, how can I make my cheekbones look like this? How can I make my nose look smaller? And you'd be like, let me show you contouring. And it'll be this whole learning experience of contouring, you know? That was in a UK anyway. I know like in Korea and Japan and China, they did a lot of contouring in their daily makeup. But in, in the UK, it wasn't that much of a, it wasn't a thing. And then this whole thing started to happen where people were asking me to do their makeup naturally like this person called Kim Kardashian. And <laughs> I remember spending ages out the back Googling who is Kim Kardashian? Trying to remember the name that everyone was asking me. I'm like, who is this girl? Also one time this girl was like, can you make me look like Sarah? I was like, who the fuck is Sarah? I never found out who Sarah was. Now I can't even fathom somebody who's into makeup not knowing what contouring means. But back then again, this whole, um, you know, beauty, beauty how it is now didn't exist. It wasn't like that. But this is where the internet kind of started to take over in terms of beauty. Everything was about to change. And one thing that started happening extremely commonly was customers asking for liquid lipstick. We didn't have li liquid lipstick. Anastasia Beverly Hills had lipstick, but we didn't. <laughs> they did have one, you know, those like double-sided, one side was a lip color and then it dried out and the other side was like a gloss. They did have that, but that was discontinued. This was before the Kylie lip kit days also, but people kept asking and asking and asking for liquid lipstick and bringing in pictures, you know, on old Instagram wars or of like these Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipsticks. We didn't have it. And it was, people would come in and they would leave. They would leave because we didn't have a liquid lipstick. This is the first time, the first point in time, I remember feeling like MAC was falling behind. And you know, in my opinion, and you know, the makeup industry as a whole, MAC never fell behind. They were the leading example. They were the leaders in what was, you know, the literal trends. Brands tried to imitate them. They weren't trying to imitate any other brands creating, you know, liquid lipsticks, anything like that. And even though, you know, Anastasia Beverly Hills products had kind of moved into the social media space and were starting to really trend on social media and starting to get everyone's interest um, up in discovering new products and new brands, MAC didn't seem phased. There was no rush to make new products or add new products to their lineup or keep up with trending products. Because what was trending a product? What does trending mean? <laughs> in terms of makeup. Nothing was trending that week. Nothing was trending that month. MAC had trending products that had been trending for decades. Trending wasn't like trending now. For example, you know, MAC Fix Plus, MAC Studio Fix Foundation. They have been trending since the 90s. What was gonna stop them? Back then, products didn't trend. They just became iconic and that was it. You know what I mean? There was no need to rush into anything. MAC was already established. What's the worst? that could happen. So I left makeup for a year at this point. We're, we're coming back to the, I was over it. I hated freelancing, I hated carrying my kit, all this, all this kind of stuff. I hated, you know, having these amazing makeup opportunities, being on these amazing shoots and then going back to makeup retail. I just didn't like it at the time. So I went to work for Disney for a year, literally didn't have any kind of makeup interaction the whole year. I wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't on Instagram or I wasn't doing like makeup Instagram. I wasn't following makeup Instagram. I don't think it even existed that in depth at this time. Didn't touch makeup once. Actually, no, that's a lie. I did a smoky eye for someone once, but other than that, didn't do it at all. Didn't even talk about it didn't want to deal with it. I think I stepped into a Sephora, didn't really buy anything over it. I think I bought some of their skincare over it. And then a year later, I returned to London. I turned to the world of makeup. And let me tell you, it was a completely different place. Within this year, new brands have come into popularity. A brand called Kiko, who I actually started working with at this point. Terrible experience. I love the people I worked with, but some of the management were awful. Another year later, Mac was going through a change. Unfortunately, I heard that some of my friends had been let go of their jobs. Some of the trainers at the time who I absolutely loved were let go. Um, Mac weren't doing so great. And it was horrible, actually. I felt a huge shift in the company, not even working for them. And, you know, watching these people um, who made the experience of working for the brand so iconic. And like a lifelong memory, positive memory for me, just being kicked out of this brand. I was like, that's, that's, horrible, horrible news. My heart was still very much there for the brand, even though I wasn't working for them. Oh, and did I mention they had launched liquid lipsticks by this time? <laughs> a little bit late though. So then I left England again for two years, <laughs> came back again and started working for Mac again. Let me tell you, completely different company at this point. And you know what? Yes, you know, you were targeted as a Mac employee before. It was retail after all. You had targets to make, but I mean, you could make them effortlessly. You didn't even really have to try because especially like on a busy Saturday, 
little things were kind of obvious, the way they cut costs on certain things, the way you were being targeted, the way they were acting with your targets, the way the brand had become not makeup artistry focused. The fun wasn't in the makeup anymore. There was no fun. It was focusing on targets. It was getting these targets done. It really wasn't a good company to work for, I'll be honest. The excitement of the artistry, I used to think of Mac as makeup artistry. It was fun, it was exciting. You got to share your you know, skills and artistry that Mac had taught you with your customer. And it just wasn't like that, it wasn't the same. The Mac makeup artist and the Mac as a makeup artist company, gone doesn't, non-existent. I cannot tell you the pressure on the staff, the management, trying to meet these targets on, on counter was intense. It felt like being on a sinking ship and you're just constantly climbing and climbing and trying, you know when a Titanic split in two in the movie and those people are trying to climb back up but they just can't reach the top? That's what it felt like all the time. So I don't work for anymore so I can speak on this. We had a lovely area manager, she was great. And towards the end of my time there, we had this trainer who, by the way, trainers were like, they used to be these really exciting people that would come in and they'll do your certifications and they'll teach you some artistry or they'll help you like serve some customers and show you how to like add a sale but really talk about the products. It, it was quite exciting when they came in. <laughs> this trainer once just told, told me I had to take the laptop home because I was a manager at this point. Take the laptop home and work from home and I was like, you're a fucking moron. And that's when I checked out I checked out of that brand instantly when she said that. And then it just made me think, I was like, you know what? This brand no longer understands themselves. From a consumer point of view, from a staff point of view, from an artistry point of view, they don't get it. They don't get the beauty industry. They used to be the beauty industry. They don't understand the position they hold within beauty retail anymore. It was like, imagine it was like an old Hollywood actor, right? In their seventies, still trying to play the part of a teen <laughs> and not understanding that no one sees you as teen anymore. You can't do that. You're not what you used to be. So that was my personal experience from an insider point of view. But also Mac became incredibly unexciting. Is that a word? Unexciting? Listen, Mac collections, limited editions were legendary. People would collect them. I would even collect them. I think I still have some of the Hello Kitty stuff. And like literally a few that come to mind, Barbie, Hello Kitty, of course. The Archie Comics collection, I didn't even know what that was. And then when Mac came out of the collection, I was like, oh, now I need to know about it. The Simpsons, Disney villains, Wonder Woman, the list goes on and on and on because they did some amazing, amazing collections. I loved their visuals. It was, it was truly like, you know, I'm proud to be working for this brand. And even like their Christmas collections, it was like, oh my God, everyone was looking to what Mac were gonna do for Christmas. And now we know they're just gonna release, you know, all those lipsticks, <laughs> all those mini lipsticks and the, the trio highlighters and stuff like that is, is the same. You know, we get to more modern days and I have to bring up again the, the Sims collection they did. They did um, this collaboration with this giant, this monster in the gaming industry, The Sims, endless opportunities, you know, what happens in that game, aliens, there's werewolves, there's vampires, there's genies, love beds, cow plants that eat you, scarecrows that come to life, and Mac put out this beige palette gray, that's just their normal range wrapped up in a different sleeve, acting like it's some kind of amazing limited edition. And collections now at this point seemed to be made up of already existing products that were maybe changed slightly, but or repackaged lipsticks. It's like somebody who works for Mac, their creative director just goes around to on a Mac counter. It's like, yeah, I'll take this lipstick and this, and you know what, just wrap it up and pop cherry blossom on a packaging. And I do have to say also, I don't think Mac products are bad at all. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. The complete opposite. I think their products are incredible and they always will be and they always have been. They are some of the best, if not the best in the industry. Where I believe Mac fell off was the rise of the beauty influencer industry and, and influencer marketing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm now an influencer. I believe this before I was an influencer as well. When you start to see other brands doing it and, and Mac just weren't. <laughs> it was kind of like, come on, come on, come on, let's do something influencery. It doesn't even have to be, you know, a collection. It just has to be a sponsorship now and then. And they did eventually get into it, but at a point where I believed it was too late and there were, they seemed like they didn't really want to. And unfortunately, as, as much as people don't like it, it is something brands have to do at a certain point, not so much now, if brands want it to be any kind of relevant or survive. Mac did actually start to do like these lipstick collaborations with different um, creators, which I I thought was a really, really cute idea. I don't know if they still do it. It is a really nice idea. But did you know also 
Mac never used to advertise, did you know this? They only ever sold in Mac stores and online on their own website. They never advertise in pit magazines. And sometimes it feels like a limited, limited collection. They would do like poster in a magazine a poster, a page in the magazine. I swear now you can buy it on like ASOS. I know you can buy it. Can you buy it in Boots? There's, there's other places you can buy it. But I do think, I mean, a bit of stubbornness perhaps to, you know, change along with the times happened. And I get it. Like why would a brand like Mac have to change when they're already kind of doing their own thing and, and doing well. Mac was never broken. It never needed fixing. It doesn't need fixing now and it's not broken now. Saying this though, Mac has come out with some really exciting things recently. Their lip balms, the squirt lip balms that people were um, acting like they never used that texture before and breaking them were really exciting. They were, that was one of the products I looked at at the beginning of this year and it got me excited about new releases again. I was very, very intrigued by them. And if you haven't already, you should take a look at their pro products, the Mac pro products, which are online, which used to be, as I said, they used to be kind of aimed more at the makeup artist. But with everyone's makeup knowledge nowadays, of, that's kind of at that level. Everyone would benefit from using them and have a great time with them. There's some really incredible products. And MAC hasn't ch uh, changed in terms of quality. They're still amazing products, still very much in professionals' kits everywhere because they're reliable and they actually work and they actually do what they say. They're not gimmicky. But at one point, and I literally think it was at one point of not foreseeing trends in the makeup industry was their point where it's like, hey, we haven't caught up and we haven't been who we could possibly be. It kept them from holding the title of the brand to own. I want all my kit to be MAC. I want all my makeup to be MAC. That wasn't a thing. However, I do see MAC rising up again because the industry is changing once again. Having held the same kind of values as a company throughout this whole time the industry was changing, um, not mass producing like quick, they're not fast fashion, they're not fast makeup. They don't just jump on any old trend for the sake of it, you know? And although this could have possibly been their downfall at one point, the fact that they've actually, you know, held on to that kind of concept may just be their rise again now the industry is changing. People aren't just super, super into makeup. They are also super into the morals of the, um, and standards of the beauty industry. The fact that MAC don't always hop on trends, the fact that MAC never have a new product every single week is something that people will see and something that people respect. There are traits in brands that us as consumers have began to hate. And those traits are things like producing too much product, weekly collections, you know? What people want from makeup at this point of time is something different, right? Something like what MAC used to be, the stand out in that period of time. MAC were the best, and then they weren't. <laughs> and then they tried to fit in, and now they're at this place that seems peaceful and steady and respectful. A big part of me wants to see Mac be the brand again. I know they have it in them and I know, you know, with the creative people that still work in that company, they have a lot to offer. They have a lot to give in terms of knowledge and in terms of makeup artistry. That's their strong point. They are at the stage where a lot of their customers, a lot of people who look to buy makeup, have the knowledge that their staff used to have. I don't know, there's something there, there's something there I can't quite tap into, but I do see Mac having an amazing future. I feel like the boredom in the makeup industry is Mac's time to shine. Let me know your opinions down below. I'd love to know your personal journeys with a brand Mac, because I feel like, especially people my age, we all kind of have one, whether you worked with them, whether you, they were like your go-to, you know what I mean? There's some amazing memories there. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, let me know your opinions down below. Follow me on TikTok right here, and you can watch more content like this right here on this playlist. Thank you so much again for joining me, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.